Uh, my name is Joseph Richter, and I, like Enrique, I work with Go Engineer, and I was tasked with uh, coming up with a rendering presentation. Uh, I absolutely love rendering. I've been teaching SolidWorks here in the Valley since 2004, and I recognize a lot of you having been in my classes before. And yes, guys, post-pandemic, we still hold live classes, so make sure to join me for one of those. It's a great time. Uh, anyway. What I want to talk about here, rendering, um, it's something that I always wanted to do, but never had the opportunity to learn. And so let's see here, my clicker's not plugged in, so I'm just going to use the mouse, and now the mouse is not. Uh, error. Boy, howdy. This should almost be fun if it wasn't live. Okay, here we go. Now my clicker's on and it's working. Okay, I need to thank uh, Ryan Cole, uh, Charn, and Alex. They were a huge help in learning rendering. Like I said, it was something I always wanted to do, but never had the time to learn it because mechanical CAD was predominantly what I was tasked with doing and making pretty pictures really falls on the wayside until you actually have to do it. Then. You have to cram for it. So it was like one of those, except Ryan, Charn, and Alex with Go Engineer, they specialize in different products. And um, Ryan, you know, does a lot of visualize as well as composer stuff. Alex does a ton of rendering as well. And Charn, they, they're all amazing at this stuff. So I spent a good six to eight hours of meetings with them to bone up on this product. So again, thank you very much to those gentlemen. And I, I'm here to present that stuff, and now I'm happy to say I'm, I'm somewhat decent at it at this point. All right, a uh, little bit about myself. Um, since I'm teaching Mechanical Cat all the time, I am modeling a Starship, and here's a shuttle as well as the runabout, which is called a star uh, Starship as well. It's kind of like in between a shuttle and a full-blown Starship. And then for Halloween, the Ghostbusters, right? There's my... Halloween costume. <laughs> so anyway, uh, on to task here. So SolidWorks Professional comes with a couple of running tools. The first one, PhotoView 360. Okay, PhotoView 360 was first introduced in SolidWorks back in 2009, and it was opposite the plugin PhotoWorks. Okay, now it's important to understand that PhotoView was a standalone product similar to what Visualize is now. Okay. Um, it was fully integrated into SolidWorks by SolidWorks 2011, and they yanked PhotoWorks out. So PhotoView went from being a standalone to being pulled straight into SolidWorks. Okay, uh, And it's based on the Nexus rendering engine from Luxology, often referred to as Moto. And by the way, I have some QR codes here. So if there's anything you want more information on, point your cameras over here. Anyhow, Photo View 360, here's the bad news, will not be included in SolidWorks 2024. Holy cow, why are you talking about it? Well, there's still a lot of companies that may be using other versions of the software. And the other side of it is that there might be a bunch of users that are currently using Photo View 360 right now. And so I've got some stuff in here for them. Absolutely. Um, and by the way, if you're using uh, Photo View, in SolidWorks 2023, you'll get this error message that tells you, hey, Service Pack 5 is the last supported release for this. Uh, to find out more information on it, you can learn more here. Okay. Now, this presentation, Photo View versus Visualize, is not, haha, my render engine is better than yours. I mean, if you want to see that, there's a ton of different videos on YouTube you'll find about that. That is not what I chose to do, okay? I want to show what each tool can do, what their strengths are, and actually give you the differences, okay? I'm a fan of both, I have to admit. Okay, bi-directional workflow. This is Photo View 360 only. Likewise, scene illumination proof sheet, as well as the fur shaders. Now, what am I talking about here? Well, bi-directional workflow. When I'm in SolidWorks, I'm in photo view. It's the same interface. All of our appearances are Luxology materials 
that are solid earth materials. What you see is what you get. I I make a change in SolidWorks is updating photo view. When I'm in my photo view screen, I make some adjustments and update SolidWorks. That's simple. That's elegant. It's great. Okay. Scene illumination proof sheet. What is this? Well, lighting is key for rendering. When I'm setting up a scene, knowing what my lighting is going to look like is important to the final render. Okay. So it takes a little time for, uh, photo view to get the scene illumination proof sheet ready but once it does i can click forward and back and find the lighting that's going to work best for my model before i start rendering so this gets me to my final render very very quickly with this uh, scene illumination proof sheet okay uh the first shaders this is unique to uh, photo view and what it is it's Objects that you don't have to model. So, for example, this cactus, you know, you see the cactus spines. <clears throat> and then you have like this grass here. Or the fire. Okay. And here's what that rendering looks like using those fur shaders. Now, quick disclaimer here. I was having a hard time getting the cactus to look exactly like that previous screen. I'm sure it was something I was doing wrong, but uh, yeah, I tried both types of mapping. Anyhow, there's fur shaders, but you can definitely see the grass coming through and the fire. Uh, I guess that's one limitation of the fur shaders. We can't really adjust how large they are. Um, to do that, you need a full-blown install a moto to manipulate those textures. But um, yeah, they, typically they have different uh, sizes that you can download and i'll talk about that a little bit later uh, for an online example firm that's a company here in arizona that builds uh, amazing automation equipment for food services okay their entire website was done in photo view 360 so you can go up there and see some amazing equipment uh, cad models that have been used uh, shown rendered rather through photo view 360 okay um, to learn more, the Photo View 360 step by step guide. Okay, you can check this one out. Um, it's a great book. And last time I checked, there was only one copy left on Amazon. So, you know, don't be down the door to get it. I mean, obviously, you can probably find this on eBay or whatever, but uh, it's a great book. And then another amazing resource Mr. Rob Rodriguez, my good friend. He's like the go to guy for rendering. I met him at SolidWorks World probably 10 years ago, and he runs the local user group out in his area, and uh, just a great guy. And he has shared PhotoView 360 examples on his website. So if you go up there, you can download the stuff that he has prepared, and you can go through it. And like I said, he's the wizard. All right, the second rendering tool is going to be SolidWorks Visualize. Okay, Visualize uh, Standard specifically is what I'm going to start talking about. Uh-oh, he said standard. That means there's more than one version. Yes, I'll get there. Okay, Visualize Standard was introduced in SolidWorks 2017. Uh, to use it, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> it is required that you have to be on SolidWorks subscription. Okay, so if you fall off subscription, you lose your license on that. So it's part of the value added. Okay. Um, this product was formally developed under the name Bunk Speed Shot. Okay. Now, things that are unique to visualize that it can do uh, GPU utilization, multi layer materials, and a separate serial number for the license install. All right, so GPU utilization. All right, with this one, this one kind of breaks my heart because when I first got a computer specifically to run PhotoView 360, I spent like $700 on the video card. And then I went to SolidWorks World at a breakout session by one of the developers for PhotoView and was asking questions. And the developer said, sorry, we do everything through the CPU. 
right? And I, like I said, I've been interested in rendering for a really long time, just never had the opportunity to spend time and actually learn it. Anyhow, that was a, a downer. But here for Visualize, you can see uh, it will utilize your NVIDIA CUDA cores or whatever high-powered uh, video card that you, SolidWorks has been telling you that you absolutely have to have for years. Well, now we have a rendering engine that can actually utilize that. Okay, that's kind of nice. All right, multi-layer materials. Here on RTD2, there's only four materials applied here. Okay, multi-layers means we can stack multiple materials within the same appearance. Okay, and here's what RTD2 looks like with only four materials applied. <clears throat> Pretty good. Ah, separate serial number for install. This is actually really huge, guys. Initially, it's annoying, right? Like, why does it need another serial number? But then when you actually look at it, if you have five licenses of SolidWorks Pro, that means you have five visualized licenses. In a lot of companies, they're like, that means I can now take those five visualized licenses and give it to the marketing team so they can make these pretty pictures. That's all well and good. That's great. So that's one advantage. <clears throat> but again, I got to tell you the real advantage in my mind is after I spent all that time rendering stuff, with both photo view and visualize, especially with uh, photo view, it like takes over your computer. So if my CAD workstation is busy rendering, I can't do CAD. That's a, really a bummer. Um, for visualize, as long as I tell visualize, no, you can't have my CPU, all you can have my GPU, then I can go ahead and somewhat do CAD while visualize is running, but really, it's better if you have a dedicated rendering system and that way you can offload the work. So to prepare for this presentation, in fact, I went down to my classroom, took my son with me and we set up on, you know, the nine computers there and we're able to fire off renderings on different computers to get the work done it was a lot nicer than trying to wait on my one computer. All right, to see Visualize in action, Amesbury Truth, they have uh, examples of their products rendered in Visualize. They have like an orbit turntable situation. So when you take a look at that web page there, you'll be able to see their product and you can click and drag on it. It's like a 3D, but all uh, rendered out. Okay. Um, for learning more about Visualize, you can check out my.solders.com. Okay, there's a SolidWorks Visualize course. And for those of you that are not familiar with that, effectively, all you need is a SolidWorks ID or now known as a 3D Experience Passport. You're going to find a ton of training up there that you can take advantage of that's being paid for by your subscription. So if you're not using it, you're effectively losing it. So there's a ton of stuff up there. Okay can scope it out, that particular learning path right there. All right, another option <clears throat> would be Visualize Training, SolidWorks Visualize Standard with Go Engineer. Okay, so yes, we do offer classes on that. And if I get enough of you interested, I'll proudly host a class here in Mesa for you guys. You just got to let us know. All right. Model preparation, regardless of which render tool you're going to use, there's things that you can do to get a better rendering. This would include the image quality, uh, making sure that you're applying your appearances at the part level only, and develop a rendering studio model. This is my power tip for you. Okay, um, image quality setting. We've all seen this. Tools, options, right? Uh, file, specific options, document properties underneath image quality. That slider bar, right? And typically, if you've called into tech support complaining about performance, one of the first things we did is we noticed that your image quality slider was, well, set to more. And the first thing we told you to do is crank it all the way down 
really, really low, and then it fixed all your performance woes. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, here's what it looks like when you have it on low. That same stop sign looking circle shows up in PhotoView 360 and in Visualize just like that. Okay, so we really need to crank it up. That way it looks like this, a lot cleaner. So again, low quality, high quality. Okay, so that's the one and only time that we highly recommend that is if you're going to make a rendering because all the rendering is doing is just taking that mesh file and applying that appearance to it. All right, uh, apply appearances at the part level. Now, this can be at uh, the entire part, individual feature, body, face, whatever. That's fine. What we're trying to say is don't necessarily apply it at the assembly level, right? We have assembly level overrides when we add color. Okay, and this tip specifically comes from Ryan Cole. Okay, Ryan, he builds a lot of Legos in SolidWorks, and you'll see some of his work a little bit later. And for him, you know, he's got so many Lego bricks, so many configs, plus there's so many colors. And even though he's giving out this advice, he doesn't necessarily do it himself. <laughs> Basically, he said, when you get to visualize and you're trying to um, apply the appearances, if they were applied at the assembly level, it doesn't always assign properly. So he winds up having to reassign it at the you know, visualize level. But bottom line, if you can handle having the color at the part level, then yes, it shows up correctly in the render engine. If you're doing overrides, um, sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. And we're not sure what the ticket is. Otherwise, we would have fixed it by now. All right. So, um, okay, developing a rendering studio. Uh, so, if anybody carved a jack o' lantern for Halloween, here it is, right, with the candle. Uh, you'll notice that candle is emitting light. We refer to this as an emissive appearance, right? In fact, if I turn off the lights, you can see that candle is emitting light. Okay, where I'm going with this is if we end up with, uh, let's see here, I think I'm noticing a white cursor on the meeting. Oh, you know what? That's uh, just this laptop. Okay, cool. I'm just watching the meeting, make sure they're getting something good. All right, right here, I'm a knife collector. And these are some of my Klingon knives. Okay, the first one, a Generations knife from Star Trek Generations, used by the Duras sisters, Bator specifically, and one-handed Batleth. Okay, where I'm going here is I wanted to um, do a rendering studio of that photograph. Now, in the photograph, there's one light source. Okay, just inside the cabinet on the front lip, you can kind of see the light blowing on the back there. Okay, I mimic that in PhotoView 360 with my CAD model. Okay, now the advantage of doing this isn't for the one shot. We can always get one shot. The advantage and the key to this advice here is repeatability. Like it takes a really long time, folks, to set up a render and get something you want. But if you have a bunch of product that you're trying to build catalog images of, you're gonna spend that much time times however many parts you have, unless you make yourself a studio model, an assembly. And then all you need to do is start swapping out the products on the shelf in this case. So here's some additional knives, additional items on that shelf. And they all, they all have the same lighting quality and that's the brilliance of this advice. Okay. And yes, that works in uh, visualize as well. <laughs> because we have <clears throat> emissive appearances and visualize as well. So there's the scene. Swap out the parts. And again, same lighting quality for consistency. Okay. So yeah, spend the time on the studio first and then just swap out the parts save you a ton of time okay for photo view 360 if you want some extra materials to apply to the part you can check out the moto materials 
okay? They're part of your SolidWorks subscription, okay? Um, if you go up here and you're logged into your SolidWorks ID, you can download their materials. I think there's like 945 of them. Um, but since I did say that, you know, we're losing this in 2024, if you're at all interested in these, I would highly recommend that you hurry, go over there and start downloading that stuff. Okay. I don't know if it'll be available um, later. It might be, but I'd rather err on the side of caution. All right. For Visualize to get additional materials. Well, NVIDIA, they've developed some materials specific for Visualize and a few other products, I suppose. But Visualize falls in one of the ones that uses their new V materials. Okay. You can check those out. And we have a video where Charn was interviewing the NVIDIA folks and uh, learning all about that. And then Charn wrote a blog all about it. Okay, <clears throat> good stuff. All right, for additional materials and HDRI environments, that stands for High Dynamic Range Image Environments. Okay, check out Polyhaven. Polyhaven is an amazing website. They've got a ton of images and textures, etc. Materials, textures, that's how I'm using that term. Okay, but polyhaven.com. For additional models to throw into your scene, obviously, 3dcontentcentral.com. If you haven't been over there yet, check it out. There's a lot of supplier models up there, right? It behooves suppliers to be up there because when you're building your design, if you need a, a product and you have a free model, most likely when you go to assemble that piece of equipment, you're going to be ordering from that supplier. So that's why they're up there. All right, some additional models on top of that. GrabCAD. GrabCAD.com forward slash library. The only bad part about GrabCAD is not all the models are SolidWorks models, which if all I'm doing is a rendering, it may not matter. I can open it into SolidWorks as a dumb solid and, you know, throw appearances on it. It might only matter that it's native if you have to make adjustments to it. Are you still able to? Got my grab went away over the summer. <laughs> went away? No, I was there today. Oh, okay. On the website. What's the question, though, specifically? I was just wondering if it was still um, actually live. They changed their main title page. It is a little confusing. Okay. Um, I will fully admit that. That's You're right. You, you, the landing page used to be the library. Yeah. <clears throat> the new landing page is like some blue thing. Because I think they want to encourage you to use them to freely print. Yes, they have. Nice, right? Yeah. I think they're just trying to monetize their site. Dig around. Okay, yeah. still, still there. Okay. Lots of great stuff. All right, additional rendering assets. Uh, Polygon.com. Now, not everything on Polygon. That's poly with two eyes. Gone.com. Uh, not everything on that website is free, so there's some paid assets that you can get. But again, if rendering is what you're doing, uh, you get what you pay for. Sometimes free stuff doesn't work out. <clears throat> so keep that in mind. So, Polygon.com. Um, uh, additional models uh, for Visualize, specifically. Uh, you can check out TurboSquid. And yes, that's a dollar sign because most of the stuff on Turbo Squid costs a pretty penny. But again, they've got some very talented artists from around the world that have contributed stunning models there. Okay, so depending on what you're trying to do, well, again, sometimes you get what you pay for. Check that out, Turbo Squid. Okay. Now, Here's that second product, PhotoView 360, and what I'm calling the functionality gap for Visualize. 
In other words, when I started this presentation, I mentioned that uh, PhotoView 360 is going away in 2024. What I was also telling you is that there's functionality you have right now that unfortunately you're going to lose by upgrading. That sounds like a downgrade. Kind of is, but um, let's talk about it. Animation. That is rendered animation. Full lighting control. SolidWorks display states, geometry configurations, right? Display states, hide show of stuff, different colors of stuff, geometry configurations, physical changes, and contour rendering. Okay, so a separate purchase is required um, unless you have the 3D Experience platform visualized connected. That is visualized pro. Okay, so let's see if I can switch to that other web page. So um, here's an example of yeah, new share screen two. Watch me mess this up, folks. I hope not. Yeah, sure. Beautiful. Hey, it looks like it worked. Okay. So, no, it didn't. That just went back to my screen. Okay. Um, you did say I can probably drag it to the same screen. So, let me try that. Um, yeah, that works. Beautiful. Okay. So, here is a rendering. And in photo view. So that was a fantastic example done by uh, How To Mechatronics. And all right, you can check out their website right there, uh, the, the YouTube page rather, and then obviously howtomechatronics.com. Okay, pretty awesome. By the way, because uh, so, let, let's see here. Because SolidWorks Photo View takes so much time, then absolutely that would mean that it'll take that much longer uh, when you do a rent, rendered uh, movie like that, right? So um, I'm sure that rendering took days, you know, if not weeks, but it's very awesome, nevertheless. Okay, so now. Here we go. All right. So 
An example for uh, visualize on visualize professional animation. This one done by our very own Ryan Cole. All done with the Yep. Uh, so, you can like hands. The okay. So the um the CAD model, uh, all the renderings was done in Visualize. The only other effects, uh, where it was doing the the swirl across the screen, that was some stuff added in Camtasia. But the rendered video was straight out of Visualize. Yeah. Visualize Pro, Visualize Pro. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the one you got to pay for, right? <laughs> okay, full lighting control. All right, in SolidWorks, the lights that we have, we can add up to eight lights in SolidWorks proper. Okay, and this is before we also add emissive appearances. The emissive appearances kind of eliminate that being a threshold problem, but yeah, in SolidWorks proper, we can add up to eight lights, I think is the current total. Anyhow, those lights can be turned on or off in Visualize. Okay. And I'm sorry, in Photo View. In Photo View. Uh, we have specific uh, settings in Photo View on how to treat those lights. So again, for Photo View, for clarity, um, what you see is what you get. Same environment. I've been talking about that. And then we have specific lighting control whether it's on or off in photo view. Okay. Um, for visualize professional, they give you the ability to add lights. But again, earlier I showed the emissive appearances. So you can add a primitive in visualize standard and apply an emissive appearance like a light. And then that just becomes your light. So um, is it a game? changer i don't know uh, but that's only available in visualize pro um, a workaround a third party alternative if you're going to stick with visualize standard would be the hdr light studio this is a pretty amazing little plugin that um, with like a paintbrush on your cad model you say hey i want some light on this fender and you like like you're in paint shop and you just start uh, rubbing on the model where you want it to light it up. And what this HDR light studio is doing is it's actually manipulating the high dynamic range image in the background to put white spots there. So that way it appears that there's point lights coming off of your map. Okay, so that's one of the fundamental differences between visualize and photo view is visualize is basically reflecting the environment a thousand percent. Okay. And this HDR light studio says, well, if it was pure white in the environment, then it shows up as a light source on the part. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you can check that out from here. All right, geometry configurations. One of my favorite knives here, uh, you can see the knuckle guard is shorter on the European version on the bottom. Um, in PhotoView 360, same environment, whatever, not a problem. If I want to use these in Visualize Standard, I'd have to save off different models. File save as, you know, config one, file save as config two whatever, and then when you open that Visualize Standard, you'd be able to do that. But if you want full access to all the configs in a single Visualize project, then yeah, Visualize Professional, you'd wind up having to go to your SolidWorks configurations, right click on the config, 
and add a data display marker. Has anybody seen that yet? No? Uh, for those of you running PDM, that's actually critical there too. Okay, as you may or may not be aware, when you preview a file in the PDM vault without opening it, it's using eDrawings. And if you try previewing a file that has configurations in the vault without opening it, all you can see was the last active configuration that was saved with the model, unless dot, 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 you had done uh, add data display marker, and then you can see that data there. Okay, or if you're an eDrawings fan and you open that file in eDrawings, as long as a data display marker was added, then the, the file has the data necessary to show that information. I'm sorry, was there a question on that? No, okay, no, okay, cool. So add data display marker, that will increase the file size, be aware of that. But once you do that, then those uh, configurations will show up in Visualize Pro and ditto for display states, okay. And then in Visualize Pro, I'll be able to have both configs in the same project. Now, if you go back to things we've been talking about, the light studio, if you set up a consistent lighting studio, then that's half the battle. I can bring in whatever config I want into that master project. Okay, then all you'd have to worry about is consistency of your material on applied to each project <laughs> that you made. Um, so yeah, it's it's a huge time saver if you have VizPro in your dealing with multi-configs, okay? All right, contour rendering. With PhotoView 360, contour rendering on the left here looks like almost a 2D drawing, okay? And then on the right, it's overlaying the 2D drawing on our render. It's kind of like shaded with edges, right? Except you have a rendered image, not just regular shading, okay? Contour rendering and Visualize Pro is different. Again, they're two different animals, okay? Um, for me personally, I like the one on the right there. It looks kind of like a technical illustration. I don't know, uh, they're different. So that's something that's going away. <laughs> the, the previous one, right, from photo view. All right. Um, <clears throat> Additional functional functionality gaps between the two products, image post-processing, the render queue, and probably the hugest one is the network render uh, rendering capabilities. I was saying, I was about ready to say network render client, but you'll see why here in a second. Um, okay, so image post-processing. After I render an image in PhotoView 360, I have the ability to go in there and adjust the color channels, make tweaks to my final image until I get the true output that I want, but the image is already rendered. And by the way, it's non-destructive. So I can go in there, make a bunch of different adjustments and save out each adjustment as a separate uh, JPEG or whatever but the original render is in its original state that was uh, put out by PhotoView. And Visualize, this one's a little bit confusing because it's a filter on the camera, but it's done before you render the image. Yeah, I don't know. I guess pre-processing slash post-processing. Moving on, <laughs> okay. Um, ways to get around this with Visualize Standard. Uh, GIMP. GIMP is an amazing free tool. It's an image manipulation tool. It's like a Photoshop clone, okay. Um, it's an open source product, so it's safe and it's free. The schools use it. Right. And the other great thing about a product like GIMP is you're going to find a ton of training videos on YouTube that you can learn the tool inside and out. Okay. So basically, you can take your rendered image, whatever it is, 
drop it into GIMP, make your color adjustments, et cetera. And by the way, I use GIMP all the time. In fact, a lot of these images I post-processed uh, post -processed in GIMP. Anyway, it's a great program. The render queue. Okay, the render queue is like scheduling a rendering to be done. Okay, this is like critical and necessary for PhotoView 360. I said that it like consumes my computer when I set up a rendering and I hit render because then I can't do anything with my computer. So it was like a must have for PhotoView 360. Well, for Visualize, Visualize Professional, it has a render queue. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you, Richard. Yep, learn RMS, guys. It's amazing. Okay, uh, network rendering capabilities. Um, starting in uh, 2013, PhotoView introduced the ability to set up your own rendering farm. Okay, all it required was Bonjour. No extra licensing required. So for my classroom, I mentioned that I have nine additional computers. So if I wanted to render, let's say that animation that that guy was doing, then I could divvy up the workload among all nine computers. Pretty amazing. Okay, now for Visualize, uh, Visualize Professional, it comes with a product called Visualize Boost. Visualize Boost can be installed on the client computer. Now, the problem with it is Visualize Boost only works on one other computer. So to have an, an identical rendering farm, I would have to buy, let's see here, eight additional Visualize Boost licenses to have the same setup. Okay. Uh, final option. Just use SOLIDWORKS 2023 for rendering if you require some of these things or obviously buy Visualize Pro. Um, keep in mind when you're on subscription, you can install previous versions. Maybe most of you already know that. Some of you might rock two or three versions on your computer. I personally rock 2019, 2023, and 2024. In any case, um, oh, has anybody heard the amazing news in 2024? We can, sorry? Right. No, okay. We can now save files down as fully functional files to 2022 or 2023, something we've been screaming for for years and years and years. Um, 2022. Yeah. That now, <laughs> limitations apply because they had to write a program to translate it, okay? Because there was a software limitation as to why it wasn't available from the get-go. And yeah, that's why it's been a limitation for years, but they couldn't ignore it anymore. And this is a really good use case as to why you might need it. And by the way, you have to be on subscription in order to use it. Of course. Um, but anyway, uh, there's in the what's new guide. Okay. Uh, um, so we've had uh, solid or interoperability. That means we could always open um, at one year later in the previous version. Okay. Um, and that was for the Mavericks that jump ahead and install the latest and greatest while the company's like, why'd you do that? And then you scramble to get everybody up. But this is a different thing that like, I tested it on a simple model. I was able to take and save a 2024 model back to 23 and feature for feature, it was there. But keep in mind, I was doing simple extrudes with rectangles and circles, right? Um, simple stuff. I would imagine if you use a new feature in the new, version that's what they're talking about in terms of limitations so it's not a hundred percent guarantee it's going to work okay but it does apply to parts assemblies and drawings so it'll be interesting to say the least and um 
I, I all I can say is it's not guaranteed guaranteed to be a hundred percent. But reading the documentation, it sounds like it's only two versions back, and they're going to maintain the two versions back moving forward. Which, in my mind, says when we're in twenty twenty eight SolidWorks, it'll only be able to save down to twenty six. But if uh, you're thinking about it like I am. I would just launch 2026, save it back down to 2024, and then, you know, whatever. I, I mean, <laughs> good luck with that. I, um, the, the limitations will apply. Well, right. Nobody else has ever, right, because it's been a software problem. Yeah, I, I know a lot of curmudgeons are like, oh, it's just a security switch. And yes, for Autodesk AutoCAD, it was. And that's why the DWG gateway and the whole legal troubles that happened with Autodesk and SolidWorks early on were a thing because all we did was strip the security code out of there. And when Autodesk said, oh, well, we'll just write a program that can translate SolidWorks. And Dassault said, yes, please. <laughs> so um, anyway, I'm glad to see that they've done this. And here is uh, some nitty gritty on it. Now, they do have a compatibility checker that you can run and it will help you to see what's going to translate and what won't. So that's, go ahead. Parasolid has always been able to go back to previous versions. The the uh, solid body itself, not the yeah, features. Not the yeah. Solid body. Are we using that or? I don't know. It's a good question. This is big. Oh, it's huge. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to see it. So, I mean, that'll help us uh, render in 2023 if you get a 24 file. Yeah. Cool. So, um, yeah, and here's the screenshot in 2024 on my install pre-release. And Service Pack Zero is out now. So, um, obviously, you can get your hands on it and try it. Okay. And for more information, here's the help file on it specifically. So cool. Um, okay, so for the gallery showdown, uh, Ryan Cole, here's his Lego Millennium Falcon done in PhotoView 360. That looks amazing until you see his visualize image. Now, SolidWorks held a rendering contest for the VARS. VARS is value added reseller, right? The uh, We'll, we'll just say the cream of the crop when it comes to the talent, right? They usually find themselves at the VAR. And Ryan was able to win that contest. The contest was, is it real or is it rendered? And I still look at this image and it blows me away. The only way that I can tell that it's rendered and it's so minute is the fact that the Lego pegs do not have the word lego written on it and ryan told me he had to suppress the lego word that he has on his lego bricks and i believe him because he's that detail oriented um and it from a performance standpoint he had to turn that off or suppress it and i believe him so yes that's about the only telltale sign that i can see in this image that tells me that that's a rendered image Anyway, um, they honored him, each brick, each each Lego brick, yeah, however many parts that kid is, is, uh, comes with, yeah, all the internals, everything. Yeah, he, um, he, basically the way he says it, he loves playing with Legos, and he found a job that would let him do that, <laughs> so um, that's perfect. They ended up honoring him with a splash screen uh, for Solidarity's Visualize the following year. Cool. Um, and then I mentioned I took my son down into the office for some renderings. Uh, here's his starship. He's kind of doing similar stuff that I do. Here's his USS Hornet in PhotoView 360. And then here it is in Visualize. Okay. Um, here's some of my own images. The Deneb class runabout uh, in PhotoView 360. And here it is in Visualize. Now, the one on Photo View, the cabin looks really blown up, blown out, white lights. 
Um, I was trying to troubleshoot that, and it turns out that the panels, the LCARS panels, uh, they can see in the cockpit and visualize that are lit up nice and neatly with the different colors. Um, PhotoView just doesn't know how to handle that. It just turns it into a, a flashlight. Um, so that's why the cabin looks so much different. It was bothering me, and I dug into it, and that's why. It's kind of a photo view 360 limitation i'll call it in any case um another image that nigel did he modeled the gundam rx 78 okay so here's the rendering in photo view and there it is in visualize okay. um <clears throat> here's another one i did the rambo 3 knife made by gil hibben this one is photo view 360, and there it is in visualize. Okay. Um, another one by Nigel, the Tron light cycle. Here's in photo view 360, and there it is in visualize. So again, you can see a miss of appearances, reflections, et cetera. Maybe slightly different settings, but you get the idea. All right, uh, Ryan Cole. His Lego snow speeder. And another one from Nigel, the Darth Maul lightsaber. And the white core blade. Um, that's how it looks on screen. I was arguing with him about that until he took me to the movie and showed me. And by golly, he's right. It's pretty amazing, though. It looks good. Um, Ryan Cole did the Lego ATAT -AT snow fighter, uh, snow speeder fight scene rather. And then Ryan Cole did some TIE fighters being chased by the X Wings. <coughs> Excuse me. And then here's some additional knives and weapons. Yeah. Done in visualize. And then Ryan Cole did the Orbiter by Lane Brown. He made a model of it and then found a backplate that was very similar to a famous image. <laughs> Turned out pretty amazing. And then he did the 1989 Lego Batmobile. And uh, for those of you that are saying, wow, that rendering is kind of dark. You can barely see the car, and Ryan would tell you, well, isn't that the point? <laughs> I think that's amazing. All right, and then uh, some Klingon knives done in Visualize. So how many hours did you spend to get those, those images that we just saw? Are we talking about like when modeling, you... or are we talking about renders? I, just when you went to render. Um, and visualize clock. the renders on average 15 minutes to set up and let the computer crunch on them. And how long does that processing take? Um, let's see hour. here. I'm familiar with, uh, I think Nigel's Tron bike. He ran that one last night. Uh, this image right there on the the right hand side that one took about two and a half hours for the computer to crunch it but keep in mind it's uh resolution size number of passes caustics a few other things and by the way two and a half hours wasn't bad i mean i've had some renders that took 10 hours plus and i think ryan cole's millennium falcon ran for over 32 hours uh on one of them i'm not sure what the final was on the one that won the contest but um there's so much mathematics happening uh in the rendering that you know that time can really add up and the more passes you do the more accurate you get but i guess to kind of steal a line from enrique before you got to find the sweet spot between too much and enough because you know if you spend another 10 hours on a rendering how much more realistic is it going to get? And 
ultimately will your fi- will your final audience appreciate it right so that there is a balance there um <clears throat> that we all have to look at and yeah i'm i'm cycling back to where i was here guys but there's a lot of cool stuff to look at yeah there's the batman right okay cool um <clears throat> and then this one was those klingon knives and then I think this is where when I address that question, ah, some more Legos by uh, Ryan Cole, miscellaneous Lego builds. And yeah, he did the starship just for me. That was pretty awesome. And then uh, SolidWorks certification, trail signs. For those of you that are interested in SolidWorks certification, that's one of the things that I focus on at Go Engineer. So I'd be happy to talk to you about that. All right. And then... Uh, here's a closing animation by Ryan Cole. He did the Optimus Prime before. All right, so those QR codes will take you to the YouTube page that is hosting those videos as well. Um, additional tools. Uh, there's a tool out there called Blender. Uh, Blender makes some pretty amazing renderings. Okay, it even has those first shaders that I was talking about. Um, it is free. The cost there, though, is going to be the learning curve. Okay. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> you can check that out, blender.org. And then one that I've been messing around with quite a bit lately, the Unreal Gaming Engine. Okay, um, unrealengine.com. Uh, that is a free program too. Granted, the licensing says, hey, if you make money, we want a cut of it. If you develop a, an award-winning game or whatever. Makes sense, right? Um, <clears throat> so anyway, if you want to do that, uh, check out Unreal Engine. Yes, we can get our SolidWorks models over to there. Uh, the program for that is called Datasmith for Unreal Engine. Okay, and you can take your SolidWorks model and prepare it for Unreal Engine. Uh, you get the bodies and appearances from SolidWorks into Unreal. And then you can either tweak the materials, the appearances in Unreal or uh, add new ones completely, right? So um, it, it's kind of like converging. Our mechanical CAD is starting to work its way into a lot of these 3D games. I mean, if you've fired off a lot of uh, different games, you'll start to see the credit screens and you'll start to see mechanical CAD packages popping up on that it's like oh wow and it's because datasmith is enabling that uh transition i mean before it wasn't a big deal because like on the nintendo 64 each character's head looked like a 20-sided dice i mean it was that blocky that chunky uh but now the uh processors are getting so good that a lot of these games look fantastic and obviously in our image quality slider that we talked about a minute ago, right? We can make a hole look like an octagon or make it look really fine. That's all the gaming engine is doing is, you know, how many polygons can it handle? And so anyway, we've reached the threshold of where some gaming design is being done in actual CAD and then just hand it off to the Unreal Engine as, um, as a asset for that game. And in fact, some uh, movies are made with Unreal Engine. Um, I know some of the Disney Star-, Star Wars stuff is being output from Unreal Engine. So it's more than just a gaming platform at this point. Okay. 
And there was the XR exporter uh, that was put out by uh, SolidWorks a while ago. And that was for going from SolidWorks to, you know, a VR format. But um, I've had much better luck with Datasmith, specifically for Unreal. I have not tried Unity uh, yet, but Unity would be Microsoft's uh, VR engine to look at. So it's all entirely up to you.